just shows how space can be used when you have that short time reference point. Now, I'm going to use that link to community currency. Now, I'm not sure how many people here, have all the Greeks left? They've gone. Hey. Um, hey, good. We've got one Greek, which is always good. Uh, community currency, we've all, we all heard of the Brixton Pound yep. and yep. Bitcoin. These are proprietary brands of community currency, and in the next year or so, there will be an open source model of community currency that will be available to any community, any family, any individual, any business to adopt and use their own community currency to measure what they're doing, to offer incentives or discounts or anything they like, they can use this open metrics model of measurement, which we're using calling community currency. Now, if you have a community centre or a business or a project that is accepting a community currency, what is often asked is why, what are you going to do with it and why should you accept it? You, can only, you would only accept the currency if you can spend it. And that's why the, the, the high here is interested in the community currency because they can charge people for admission, impart payment in community currency, and then use it to spend to volunteers or commissions, or they can pay for advertising or printing or design. So that on the great advantage of the community currency is that it's, it's circular, it's part of the circular economy, it never leaves the area, it's just circulate around the hive. But my link into temporary is that you don't want to hang on to your community currency if you've earned it. You want to spend it straight away because you don't know what's going to happen. So that spending, that imperative to spend community currency is what drives the local economy. So as fast as you earn it, you spend it. And if you're spending it, you're giving it to market. Market's giving to G. He's giving it to It's money is circulating. And that's how we can start to build a community currency, a community economy, and the Hive is a perfect, perhaps a perfect location to demonstrate this kind of So I think that's uh, Fleur. Why haven't you come up and told me I've been speaking too long? Yeah. Okay, permaculture. You've all heard of permaculture, haven't you? Permaculture is a, uh, a design tool. It enables people to begin to think about designing. Now, people really... I mean, do you design? When's the last time you actually designed something? I, I used to design websites, actually. Oh, it's been a while, though. A couple of years. So, if, uh, permaculture, the imperative for permaculture design is basically that we need to grow more food, we need to restore the soil, we need to capture energy, we need to, climb, we need to counter climate change. We need to sort of start to redesign our human settlements so that we don't burn up all the fossil fuels, all the energy, all the materials, and leave nothing for eight or nine generations forward. So we have a design tool called permaculture, which I will just say has three basic principles, and these are the principles which the directors and those working hive may agree with. The principles are earth care, people care, and fair share. Those are the key principles that drive permaculture designers. There are about a million people in the world that have actually undergone a permaculture design course. And it's a systems tool, it's a system. So if we look at the system, say this building, we would look at the, the growing area in the front and we would design a growing area that would incorporate, uh, in, encourage people in the local states to start growing. And it would be a demonstration plot down there. We, I asked a question at Gardner's Question Time on air quality. 
I said, if we were growing vertically up the sides of buildings, what plants would the panel grow on the vertical growth systems? And they referred me to NASA because they put up on the, the spaceship, circling the Earth, various plants to try and clean the air in the, the space center. So it's not as far-fetched as you'd think, but it is possible tobacco plants, tobacco leaves are very sticky. There needs to be some ways in which we can capture some of the particulates in the air using vertical growing. It could be that we could put in a pilot growing system on the outside and clad this building with a growing yeah. system. We use, we can talk about how we can use all the waste food, compost, how we can derive energy, green roofs, solar power, different systems to try and make the whole building more sustainable and integrate this sustainable building with, with all empty buildings and all buildings. So permaculture design helps us redesign our lives and the way we work together in a way that is, is to the benefit of ourselves and the planet. Not much, but I'm satisfied. Oh, nice. I'm happy. You're satisfied. I'm satisfied. <laughs> I make a point about one, one of the reasons what attracted uh, myself and, and some of the other members, some of the other members of the hive, um, to to the the community currency. Um, it's actually, again, I don't want to keep referring to modern technology as if I'm some kind of you know guru for, for Microsoft or, but the advent of the ability to monitor and check and make it credible and trustable. This is something that's new that is, you know, an app-based system that you can have on your phone, for example, and you can actually then treat it like a proper currency, and it can become an infrastructure. And it was important because I think Phoenix mentioned to you, uh, well, uh, at some point about watching a particular movie and how are we going to change all of our cities, and this was, again, the problem that, that fundamentally faces all of us. It's a massive amount of work to be done to change these cities. And what attracted me and what attracted me to this whole concept was the idea that we don't necessarily need to do it that way around. What we could do is in the gaps start to build the world that we would like to see and make sure that the infrastructure for that was strong and valid and in place and just continue to grow that infrastructure knowing that over time eventually, you know, I don't want to talk about replacing or revolution, but certainly knowing that over time we become strong enough to sustain a large amount of people. So it was the, it's the underpinning infrastructure that I'm, uh, I'm really interested in. The idea that we can build currencies, we can build systems and designs that I, mean, I remember mentioning to Tom when he first came to see us and I kicked myself afterwards that you know, we were inspired by the Japanese mafia, the Yakuza. <laughs> somehow the infrastructure that had been built in the black market was capable of sustaining these people and save lives and that I found very inspirational and I don't necessarily see that while we don't have any nuclear disasters going on now right here we are inexorably creeping towards the number of different environments meltdown, either economic or um, you know, environmental you know there are a number of different ones and so I think it's only wise as a society for us to start thinking about putting in place our own backup plans and fail safes and so on. So that's, that's what I thought. I mean, I would say essential, but I mean, I'd like to see Tom Charles give some comments. Just a tiny point. Um, uh, George Ferguson, the mayor of Bristol, gets paid in Bristol pounds, just out of interest. One of the <coughs> problems, and whatever he gets paid, I don't know, 70,000 or something. One of his problems, and this is why critical mass is so important, is he can obviously buy lots and lots of coffee and <laughs> it's getting beyond the hospitality circuit which is a, a, a bit of a dilemma, you know, obviously you can get plumbing and so on. Um, but anyway, I'm just saying there is an example. He's probably the most high-profile individual 
within the political system who, who has chosen to be paid in an alternative currency. So it's just a fact. To actually to actually answer your point on that question, it was one of the it was one of the fundamental personal boundaries that I had to consider when I was looking at the community currency, which is how can I encourage people to, to take a currency on and then work so that they can spend it in Starbucks or work so they can spend it in Tesco's or McDonald's? Because that to me fundamentally doesn't seem to make much sense. So then it became quite clear that what we really need to do is be able to provide fresh food and vegetables. We're using this community currency. So the idea of the infrastructure is that outlying areas will grow their fruit and vegetables, cheap prices, and send them into the town, which can then be purchased. So it could buy more than, than just copy. I mean, one, one of the issues which is quite interesting is, is how the public sector can react and to encourage it in this case. And procurement is one of the most difficult problems because procurement, as we all know, is incredibly rich. And the number of just taking Britain just as an example, local authorities are really trying to not bend the rules, but redefine what best value means. And once you are able to then begin to redefine what best value means, you can often take in local suppliers, and then you've also got an entry point into a wider circuit of, of these local currencies. I mean, where I live near Strand, they have a local currency as well. And the guys who run the time bank also come from there. And uh, again, we've got the problem of the coffee circuit. Sorry, I'm not saying that negatively, but I'm just saying you, you want things that are at higher, well, where you can spend some of the money or get more services, and I think that's an interesting challenge. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy listening actually, and I'm obviously any to make points from Say, is there any questions from um, what does the panel think? Having you know, we've heard a lot of stuff over the last two days, all about planning and housing and use of space and people with space and people wanting space. Um, how do you think we can make it easier for groups to use space? Uh, and I'd also like to ask the question of how do we make cities and planning more environmentally friendly or anything you know about that? A couple of questions, whichever bit interests you. Should we just gather a few questions oh, together? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I just, could, could, were you putting your hand up? Yeah. Um, just basically. gather a few questions then we can yeah. talk between them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, choose what you want. I don't, um, there's a lot to talk about currency and I'm, to be honest, not the person to be talking about currency, but when I think about currency I think about wealth and when I think about wealth I think about health and um, mm. what I think about space that you were saying how can we use it to make the most of it. I think a space where there is a dance area for people to come and do dance classes, to do yoga, not just yoga, but to, to stretch and to get in touch with their chakras and just realign and feel